There was no doubt that Christmas was Uncle Stewart's favorite holiday. Every year you'd find him selling Christmas trees to raise money for the AIDS charity that he put in Cindy's name. One year I went to visit him at the Christmas tree lot and he wanted to show me this gift box that he had found that was sitting under one of the Christmas trees there. And he insisted that it was a magic box. And he was right. It was magic. He asked us all to wish for what we thought was inside, not for ourselves, but for someone else. And I think that's the most magical Christmas I'll ever have. Because what was really in that box was all the good that Uncle Stewart saw in every single one of us. My uncle had an amazing way to get people to believe in possibilities, to believe in themselves. Because he believed in all of us. In fact, not one person who was lucky enough to be in the presence of my uncle would walk away without feeling better about themselves, about their lives, about just being alive. I know that you're really not gone, Uncle Stewart, because you'll always be there. Standing over my shoulder. Smiling that smile. And whispering in my ear and reminding me that life isn't just some stupid box, but a box that's filled with hope and faith and most of all magic JR is absolutely right from this day on I'll never be able to think about Stuart without smiling especially around Christmas as a matter of fact your Christmas story brought up a little uh, holiday uh, anecdote of my own <laughs> And this is going to be, you know, way too early for you to remember. This is years ago. I was doing a TV show. <sighs> was it, Jack? Nothing, nothing but, nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. Thank you, sir. And Stuart showed up, and he was uh, pretending to be Adam, dressed as Santa Claus. And I'm telling you, he had the whole nine. He was beautiful. He had the white beard and the red hat and the suit and everything. And he's giving away millions, you know, like, like his brother, like millions and millions of dollars. Like, it's nothing. And the great thing was every dime of it was Adam's money. <laughs> and I don't think even Adam cared because Stuart was so good at it. He just, he and, he and Santa Claus, they were, a, they were just a right on match, you know. You should have seen him up there giving away checks like a coffee machine. So. Was that Charlie? Uh, the kids on the street need a new clubhouse? That's okay. You just remember the open bar. <laughs> yeah, Stuart and Santa Claus, they were, they, were, they were something else together. He was, it was amazing. It's like he said, all you had to do was believe in him, and he made it so easy. Because he, he believed in you. There was never a more fun generous, kind, loving soul, meant to love other people on this earth. I mean, the only thing that he liked more than laughter, of his own laughter, was hearing people, other people laugh. And don't kid yourself, he hears us today, every one of us. You know, he can hear everything, wherever he's sitting. You know, he's eating us up with a spoon. He can definitely feel the love. And another thing that Stuart loved hearing, which is completely, you know, um, foreign to me because I, like many of us here, think of Stuart as, as simply as an artist, you know, as a, as a painter. As he loved music, you know. And uh, he loved this one song so much. A uh, simple song, but to me it was sort of more of a, an anthem for Stuart because it, it really um, it sums up his philosophy of life. And I think for Stuart's sake, 
We should all give it a shot. So, to facilitate that, I brought along visual cue. <laughs> yep. Next time you're found with your chin on the ground, there's a lot to be learned. So look around. <laughs> Just what makes that list?